Hi, my name is Zachary Angelet, and I was going to be going over a use case of the Reflect Package. Um, Reflect Package can do a lot of things. It's awfully generic. It's sort of the point, and so I'm going to be just showing or displaying a specific example of how to use it. And in my example, I'm basically uh, setting up code in order to be able to transfer data from one database to another given it has a maximum amount of fields, in this case 12. Um, so this is the struct that I built, this is the table name, these are the fields, there's 12 of them, these are the 12 types, well 12 field types I should say. And there's another struct to throw them into slices basically. And Basically, I'm loading up the data with mock data, and I'm calling this function. What does this function do? Well, it takes in uh, that mock data, and basically initializes that bottom struct right here, and then it for loops through the fields of that um, struct. So what is all this stuff right here up to this point basically you're getting the value of it and then you're turning it into a reflective value that's what that dot element pretty much does it gives you back a reflective value this num field counts the fields i'm using that within my for loop so it's kind of the fields of that reflect value that is the value of that struct and right here I'm checking if that if the field that it's it's for looping through actually has a value. Um, you cannot just do you know this. It doesn't really work that way with reflect values. Um, you cannot do this. You know like that it it doesn't work that way. But if you do is valid it returns a bool which will report whether or not that field has a value <coughs> which is great when you go through different types and everything and right here we have a switch statement and basically we're turning into a reflect value and we're getting the, the type and we're glossing over that field which is of that type and then we're getting the name a lot of this has to be kind of in that order you could split this up you know obviously you could do you know this is well I should probably do this in order to get the um, type of whatever it is you're uh, for looping through and then this would be the field so you could do something like this oh, t for type something like that and then you could just do t if you wanted to shorten it or whatever you don't have to um, this does do an extra allocation so I just do it like this um, and then we're taking the name of that field as we iterate through it and we're just taking the first letter we're slicing it and we're looking for F or T or S why are we doing that because these begin with F these begin with T and the table begins with S and so we're basically splitting it up and then we're appending it into that data struct which is just has a bunch of slices, right? And we're just filling it up with whatever fields and data are within the struct. So that when we run it, let's say we do, well, we could do this. Okay, let's say we wanna know what this is, or if we could do a watch on it. Does it begin with F? Let's see if it evaluates. Yep, 
Maybe you can't evaluate the reflect value in this type of way. I'm thinking you could. Um, but you see these are the fields that are filled up from this. And eventually the reflection sort of... Well, no, that's just the same one. Either way, it's looking through the names until it finds the first letter of one. And F, oh, the first one was ID, and so neither of these are begin with I. That's why it skipped them. Found S. And so and that's because of the S table, right? And so uh, this should be person, just like this is person for S table. So then the next field it goes through, it should find the F and it should end up here and it should fill it up. There it goes. So when you look at it, name. Because that was the name and that was the field that starts with F. And you kind of begin to get the idea of what's going on here. And that's how you get person, the next slice is name age, and the next slice is string int. And uh, that would be how you would fill up this um, struct with these slices. So that when you go to, let's say, print it out or, or generate code for the different fields and types, or you're trying to create a table in the other database with these fields and types, um, that would be how you would easily be able to do it. The only thing that takes time is learning all of this. You know, these big reflect dot val dot method dot method dot method sort of things. Um, it's just one of those things where you just gotta memorize that you gotta turn it into a, a reflect value and then you get to use it for whatever the heck you want. And that's just how it goes. Um, you could shorten it or whatever. But you also got to remember reflect is kind of a slower package. So you probably don't want to allocate the heck out of stuff with it. Um, because you're, you're, you're reflecting on what this code actually is and does. Um, yeah, and that, that's pretty much how and why I use reflect package. I've used it to do other things as well. Um, but this was, I think, a use case where you get to use quite a bit of its methods in a very specific way, even though the point of it's really general. Um, that's why when you go to the reflect package, there is a lot of these methods and types. I mean, a lot. Um, but you know, it is getting into really witty stuff. I'm, I'm just taking values from a struct, which would normally be from a database, and then just turning them into slices, and then gonna save them, or split them up, and put them into another database. And that's really it. It just seems like it's really complicated code, but it's not. Um, but there's so much you can you can do with the reflect package that it's crazy. I'll probably go over more stuff in the future as I need some stuff. I'm just you know there, there's so many use cases that I'm I'm just not gonna do that right now and go through every little. You know, it'd be kind of crazy to go through each one. No one re would remember that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll um, push this to GitHub, and you can, you know, fiddle with it or do whatever. Actually, probably could just take this, go to the Go Playground, and probably just. I accidentally get rid of it. 
No good. This happens when you talk and leave your hand on the keyboard. But um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have a link to this and you can do whatever the heck you feel like with it. Um, but I, I just think it's useful for when you want to do more with the data than normally just save it in a database and, and kind of leave it alone. This, you're, you're actually able to like turn it into code in a sense. Um, and reuse it and, well, reflect is reuse code. That's pretty much its entire point. Um, but yeah, and all you're really using is reflect here. This, I was just printing out here, so you don't even really need this. It's, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I am using it right here in order to turn it into a string. You can use different ways to turn things into other values. I just found this to be the easiest. Um, but yeah, that's the reflect package. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or concerns or if you are stuck on trying to build out this whole enchilada, uh, let me know. All right, thank you.